Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins, and I'm going to show you how you can extend CSS with JavaScript and include information for custom selectors and events for your JavaScript powered CSS rules. So here I have a, uh, an example HTML file, and I have a unordered list element with a few children, and I have a text area tag that has some default content inside of it. The other two things I'm pulling in here are this output.css stylesheet and the output.js uh, JavaScript stylesheet that we'll be generating with our compiler. So as you can see right now, the output.css and output.js files are completely empty, as is our input CSS stylesheet. So in order to turn this input file into the output CSS and JavaScript, I'm going to use Node. And here I have a file called example.js that pulls in the CSS compiler that I've been working with. We're also going to pull in a number of pseudo class example plugins. And we're going to run the CSS compiler with the plugins that we've pulled in. And the first thing, the first argument that we supply on the command line is going to be read as the input CSS stylesheet file name. The second thing that we include as a command line argument is going to be the output JavaScript file name. And the last thing is going to be output CSS stylesheet. And that one's optional. If we don't supply an output CSS stylesheet, it will just write the CSS inside the JavaScript. So to make sure that everything's working here, I'm going to say uh, for each of our ULs, let's give them a border 1px dotted current color. And so now if I hop over here and say node example.js, that's the file that I've created. Input.css is the style sheet to read. Output.js is the JavaScript we want to write. And output.css is for any of the plain CSS rules that don't require CSS. That's where they'll go. So if we run this now, what we should see is because this rule that we've written does not require JavaScript, it should just go straight through to our output.css. And if we view this, we can see that there is our CSS is being loaded. We've got that border. I think we're ready to try a JavaScript powered rule. So if we were to say um, any UL that has a target, That'll be a fun one. Uh, let's say that the border should be 4px dashed red. Now, when I compile this, this is a JS powered rule. And so this is going to end up in output.js, which currently has nothing. So now when we hop over to our example.html, Oh, I forgot a colon here. The other thing, because we're dealing with valid CSS, if you put invalid CSS in, it won't work. This only reads strict valid CSS and then converts it to the CSS and JavaScript that's required. So here we have a JavaScript powered rule. Um, it has included JS and CSS for us. And then because we've used has, it also includes the has function that's required. And it has written one JS and CSS rules with the default event listeners uh, just for our one rule that requires it. So what started out as UL has target and a rule ends up as has UL target and our rule. And we can see that it is running. So now what I've added here is inside of any JS powered rule, if you define a selector, and I'm going to say window here, and if you define custom events here, it takes the same format that JS and CSS would. I'm going to do this on the load event on window. Allow me to recompile. And then this time, instead of being inside of the default ones, it's output one here with the custom event listeners. So we can see that this time it's running has UL target. It has the entire rule, but 
our custom event listeners have been added here and our selector is here. So it's going to happen on window load. If we were to change this to be window click, recompile, you would see that it doesn't apply until we click. So I'm going to do that again. When I click, the rule applies. So here we've defined a custom event listener for the reprocessing of that rule. So I'm going to give another example here. We've got this text area with scrollable text. I'm going to do one that uses an element query in here. So I'm going to say text area js uh, min scroll y and let's just do 10 pixels. So let's make that hot pink when it's at least 10 pixels scrolled from the top. We'll recompile that and then load it up here. So the first click is going to apply that first rule. And as you can see, if I've scrolled more than 10 and I click, it goes hot pink. And this is because the default events are window load, resize, input, and click. But that's probably not what we want. We probably want to listen only to the scroll events and only on the text area elements. So if I go in here and say JS selector text area, and then if I say JS events, um, what should I put in here? Scroll. Now it won't happen on load. It won't happen on any window-based events. I'll click to apply that one, but it's going to happen just on the scroll, just on the text area. Um, if I want to do this on window load as well, I can do this. Oh, it's not at least 10 scrolled. I'll change this to max so you can see that it does apply on load. So now it will be hot pink until it's scrolled at least 10. And so you saw that that applies on window load and on scroll. And if I take this rule away and recompile, you'll see that it happens on load, but it doesn't, should not happen on scroll. So I'm scrolling it here and it's not firing because I took that away. So that's one way that you can write 100% valid CSS selectors and write rules that include 100% valid CSS variables, but process them using JavaScript, turn them into the CSS and JavaScript that you need in order to apply all the styles that you need to do. So this is one way that you can extend CSS with JavaScript uh, to do anything that JavaScript is aware of and still apply styles from your CSS style sheets. I hope that's been fun. Go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe. You know what's up. More videos coming soon.